welcome to the Village Green NBTV show on the environment. And I'm Nancy Gardner, your host, but we're back at Rogers Gardens. And do we have a selection? We're going to get into all sorts of things, not just gourds, but wonderful plants for fall. I'm here with Suzanne Hetrick from Rogers Gardens, and we've got a table full of things I can't wait to dive into uh, for fall. So, Suzanne, Hi. what do we got? Welcome to fall here. Even though the weather's still a little bit warm, uh, it's time to start thinking about moving forward. And some of the th things that we can talk about will be great to plant right now, okay. whenever you like. And some of them, even though I'm showing them to you, I say wait until it gets a little bit cooler so that you have longevity with okay. the plants. All and right. um, so I guess the first thing we can talk about are some of the grasses. I think there's That's such a- That's a grass? It looks like- Well, this is actually millet. So, oh, is um, it millet? It, oh, it can looks, we feed things off of it? <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I'm pretty sure that once these seed heads dry, and uh -huh. you'll, you'll see some throughout the nursery, okay. um, yes, you can use the seeds and feed birds, and of course, birds will be attracted oh, yeah. to them in your garden. Now, how and, tall does that get? Is that about as tight? Uh, maybe a little bit taller if you'd started them from seed in the ground, but they'll get a little bit taller. That's about it. And these are an annual, so it's just a decoration for oh, fall. Oh, okay. Um, okay. In the next few weeks, we'll have smaller containers of them to be planting. So, you know, this is a great one just to put by your front door because it's in a big cachet pot. But it would probably also attract birds, I would think. Yes, yes. And it's it's so, I mean, it's so beautiful and you it can is, combine it. It is, and the color it. is gorgeous. Right, and you can combine it because everybody knows some of these grasses back here. This is like the regular um, feather grass, uh, not feather grass, what do you, uh, anyway, the, the big tall grass that everybody has. and. It starts like this. You can plant it and have it year after year after year. It's the uh, Penicetum rubrum, which is also called, I think, Red Riding Hood. Okay, so and are these one of those ones you cut back every year also? Yes, okay. so you'll do that like end of November. Or if you want, some people, if you're uh, doing a habitat garden, you wait until February. You let the birds kind of live in it all oh, winter okay. and okay. enjoy that. There's also this really pretty Carex buchanii, which I always jokingly say it looks dead. So even it does if you, look dead. <laughs> even if you kill it, it's kind of okay for the season. So, well, it, but it does it very autumnal in terms it, of yeah. its coloring. <laughs> and look at you know this, and then you throw a couple of squash in there. And uh -huh. Your decorations are good. Uh, so this is Carex red rooster. Yeah, and I know that because I'm reading the label, <laughs> not because <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, these it. are great. You can get them very small. We can probably. I hope we can just set them back there. There. Somewhere. Okay. There. You go. Um, yeah. So. Grasses, I think, are a great place to start in fall because you can start them small and they can get large and you can enjoy them year after year. Again, cutting them back sometimes for people is hard, but it makes them look so much better the next year. Okay, so, so if you, and you just take your big clippers, just chump chump like that? Yeah, I mean, it sounds real easy, but it's probably more like a hack, hacking oh, at okay, it because okay. you want them to be pretty short so that they come out again and look just as nice and full. If you still have a lot of dead stuff down at the bottom, uh -huh. you know, if you'll sometimes uh -huh. cut them this high, it won't look as nice as oh, if you okay. cut it really low. Oh, get your machete out, sharp. Right, <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. And so then some other just really seasonal. This is... This is really interesting. Yeah, I mean, this, this is, is... What is this called? This is a celosia, and there are different kinds. I think a lot of people are used to this one. Oops, I think I feel that the container yeah, is a little bit broken. But this is also a celosia. This one. It couldn't be more different. <laughs> yeah, this one is called coxcomb. And you know, you can sort of see it looks like it a little looks bit like of a brain. brain <laughs> in a very scary movie. <laughs> it does, but they're beautiful. Uh, this time of year, they look spectacular in your garden. You can get these in bedding sizes and just put them all over again with the grasses, and it looks really, really now, autumnal. Uh, are, yeah, it does, but I'm wondering. Can you cut these and keep them in water at all? You can. Because these would great. make a really interesting like, table decoration right. or something. They are a great cut flower. You just, of course, strip all the leaves off uh -huh. of it. And, and these as well. Beautiful red color. Yeah, this aren't is they really, pretty? They really come stuff. in different colors. They come in uh, yellows and pinks. And they're, they're just a really fun plant to have. And it, you know, just this trio here it's it's great It'll yeah set the scene and then if you want something a little bit more tropical uh-huh you know we have these beautiful bromeliads which and they come in all sorts of they do we've got it in red and orange red. That's and a really pretty red 
Yeah, and um, yellow. Oh, I mean, I it's oh. stuck by there. I don't want to knock it over. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, bromeliads, they're really fun. They're super easy to have in the house and outside. A lot of people don't realize that you can have them outside. Uh -huh. You just, they don't want to have any direct sunlight. So if you have a nice shady backyard and you We wanna, don't know what to do with it there. Right, and you want to <laughs> keep it maybe a little bit more tropical. These are great and um, because they're basically an air plant. Um, they only have roots to stabilize themselves in soil, so you're going to keep water down here. In, oh, okay. In this part of the plant. Not, not in the soil. You can. I mean, it, it'll look a lot nicer, but um, it's most important to have the water in here. And then they are monocarpic, so once it's finished blooming here, it will die. And if you have bromeliads um, and you're really lucky, it'll send out pups on the side. You'll have more as the time goes on. But usually these decorative ones, you'll put it in a in a little pot and it'll last for months and months and months. Oh, pretty color. Yeah, and again, bringing a little fall inside. So I, I kind of like that. Of course we have all, all of the squashes and the pumpkins. I didn't even bring an actual pumpkin because there are so many beautiful different kinds of squash. It is like, like a painter has just taken this, uh, an abstract painter, and right? really done a beautiful job. And, and I like that a lot of them have the stems on them so they'll dry out. We have the beautiful gourds that will yeah, dry look out. look at and that. It looks really pretty. It will eventually dry out to just kind of like a, a putty color. And then the seeds, you can shake it. Yeah, you can shake it, but you can also put a hole in it, hang it in a tree, and oh, make it a birdhouse, a birdhouse. because okay. it will dry out inside as well. All right. So, you know, now and then in the spring, you can have a nice birdhouse, so many different kinds of pumpkins and gourds. I've got way too many back there, that really, really, really knobby one. We'll take this one. Like, uh, that's, that's a biggie. So this, I feel like you could even build an entire, um, like a centerpiece around this. You could set this in the center. Or you could make a diorama. Yeah, <laughs> you could do a whole thing with this or even just have a horror movie uh, yeah, kind uh -huh. of thing. That's but, a, a squash horror movie. Right. And that, that, you know, they and have all be, the, like, the, I was watching the other night, they had a tire that was doing all this stuff. We'll have squash oh gosh, do all these yes. things. And we'll call it squash. Yes. We'll just call right, it squash. Just be, make it simple. It'll, it means so many things. squash will squash things. So there's, there's that. And just... You know, a lot of times people will take pumpkins and they'll stack them up and they've got a little pumpkin cairn. So just a lot of things. And okay, going back to really fun little plants. You don't, you don't even know what these are right now, but this is something you could plant now. Uh -huh. These are asters. Oh, so, okay. Um, most people on the West Coast don't think of asters and chrysanthemums too much yeah. because they are perennial, but um, we don't like things to come out and go away, yeah. and you have to wait until next right. year to get them. So these are the little short, they're called Pixie Princess Mix of asters. You could plant them now and enjoy them through Thanksgiving, and then you can either dig them up, or if you want to give them that space in your garden, leave them there. They'll come out again. And um, let's not forget the native California asters that are beautiful and purple. So if you really want an aster, a true uh -huh. aster, we have a native aster that is really really pretty and the butterflies love oh okay so that's that's always nice yeah and if you're you know building pots or bedding or things like that having All these silver, different colors having this what is this this, this purple is the sweet deep, potato deep vine um the ipomia these um you can put them in a pot and they'll grow over the side you can put them in the ground and they'll kind of grow all over they do get a little pink flower occasionally, uh -huh. but for the most part, it's the foliage. And at this time of the year, this, this is, is a really great a nice way to accent add. piece. Now again, is this an annual or a perennial? Or it's a perennial. A perennial. And really when you dig it up, it's funny, you will find little teeny potatoes at the bottom. Okay, it's, it's all like right. It's a uh -huh. plant. Uh -huh. And I, just, I really want to talk about how much I love, personally, yeah. Yeah. purple and lime green. Oh yeah, um, that is nice. I've got these beautiful cypress back uh -huh. here as well, but what a great combination in your garden. This and is pretty, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little tinges of pink too. Yeah, this is called uh, Euphorbia Ascot Rainbow. And this is a perennial. Again, once it's done blooming, you'll chop it off nice and short and it'll come right back out again. It does have the milky sap that Euphorbias have, like poinsettias and some other things, sticks on fire. But uh -huh. um, just a beautiful, I mean, it, it can be spring, it can be fall. It has these, just these beautiful little, rose touches here 
and, but it looks great with purple as well. Yeah, no, this is, this is a really nice combination. And now, okay, we're gonna talk about the things that everybody loves but really shouldn't be planting right now. Okay. Um, these are ornamental cabbages and kales. Uh, the cabbage is a smooth leaf, the kale is a frilly leaf. Yeah, that's, that that's the only difference okay. with these. And they really? come in beautiful colors and right now they just look, look like cute little... Are they at all edible? They are edible, but they're not raised as an edible okay. plant, so... Um, but if you were really desperate one night and you said, I need a <laughs> few extra leaves for my salad, you could come out and get I these. Don't, I don't know if I'd do it, but maybe you. Um, but these come in such beautiful, beautiful colors, and eventually they will become a huge rosette. Uh -huh. and, and when I say this, it, I mean it's as long as the weather stays cool. If the weather warms up, it'll be just like a salad, and it will bolt oh, straight okay. from the uh -huh. center. So that's why I caution people, make sure it's cool in the evening and a little bit cooler in the days so that they don't bolt. Now, are and these full sun or shade? Yeah. Or what? Full sun, and, okay. And they'll grow until spring, as long as the weather cooperates with them. And these them. are annuals or? Yes. Annuals, okay. And you know, a lot of people are using these now for bouquets because they'll let the stem get really long. They'll keep oh. stripping the bottom uh -huh. and they'll put them in a bouquet. Ah. So that's, it's pretty neat. But you can see there's a ton of gorgeous colors and just, um, and people, is this another one here? Yeah, people use them for bedding, and they're come out, come they're out. just yeah. there. We go. Look I at mean, the colors on that beautiful? one. Wow, that it's, is it's really just something. Stunning. And what you could do is mix it with like, look at this, another good annual. How oh, pretty that is that? So dramatic, of, yeah, purple and so orange, so fall-like, and then the smell is also really pretty. Um, I think marigolds are kind of like yeah, <laughs> some people. I think love it's an them. acquired taste. <laughs> Some people love them, like me. Uh -huh. um, I love marigolds. One, you can grow them from seed. They're one of the fastest plants you can grow from seed. And they are gorgeous. And you can just very inexpensively litter your entire garden with beautiful color that you can just use. Now, are out. they all in the, in the yellow range? Uh, orange and yellow. Uh -huh. There are some with some tinges of red. There are, um, there are tall ones. There are short ones. There are these beautiful ones in the back. See those little pom-pom oh, yeah. heads? Okay. Those are also the, um, Which is bigger. the beautiful, I beautiful. I mean, just, they're yeah, stunning. So uh -huh. The heads on these, and then again, the cut flower. You can bring them oh, in yeah. if you like. Now just, again, annual, perennial? They are an annual. An annual, but okay. they're a very long living annual as long as the weather is, is cooperating yes. with you. Um, but, you know, just watering regularly is, is great for them. Stay up there. I know, I shoved All right. so much in here because it's a great time to look at color. So chrysanthemums, again, we're going with our yellows and oranges. And are and these also? Yeah. Oh, this, is, this is really I broke one of these off. Look at what a beautiful little boutonniere I have here. So we've this, got, I mean, this, I could see this is almost like a bridal bouquet just by itself. Right? <laughs> and these are very, very long lasting flowers in a vase. Um, they're not super long lived um, in, the in the garden, but if you deadhead them, they will bloom more and more. And so that's, you can decide, do this I want it to be? garden mum white. That doesn't seem like a very descriptive, it's much more <laughs> than just a white one. <laughs> this is garden mum yellow. So. It's, I mean, need better titles for these. <laughs> there are some really spectacular large mums, but these bedding mums are just fantastic. And when you buy them like this, okay. so I brought these uh -huh. um, kind of uh, still closed flowers. They're going to last even longer. And so these will be uh, the same color that the right. they're coming out, sort yeah. of a, a rusty color. Yeah, and so you mix these three together. I love these, pot, though. I think that just, is really pretty. Yeah, they're just, they're such a great harbinger of fall just like the asters. Um, so it's kind of an east coasty, really truly cool weather thing. And these, if you plant them at the right time, keep them going, again, they'll come back next year, but most people don't like to give them that space. Uh -huh. And uh, yes, All right, so we got okay. some time. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about <laughs> things, things that are good to eat or to get ready for. Um, I'm a planner, I plan very far in advance, so I'm, I'm asking everyone else, get ready for Thanksgiving, yeah, okay. because you can have a beautiful herb uh, container in your kitchen or in your garden, and plant the things that you're gonna use at Thanksgiving that you say, oh shoot, I don't have any sage. Uh -huh. So let's plant some bird garden sage, which is back here, this one. 
So we've got thyme, okay. we've got sage, we've got parsley, we've got rosemary, all the great, um, I think the parsley is back here. Okay. I'll give that one to you. All right. Um, you know, if you have these on hand, you are ready for Thanksgiving. That's true. And and it looks gorgeous. Yeah. And um, I just, I think it's a really good thing to, to think about what you're going to be doing the next few months because they're always frantic. Um, just always like, I always forget something. Yes, and that, I, that's my whole way of cooking. Oh, I don't have this, so what will I use? <laughs> yeah, so I literally planted rosemary, I, I think three times at different places I've lived because I always forget to buy rosemary and it's a great plant. So yeah. sage is a good one. Now these are all annuals or well, rosemary isn't it? Rosemary no, isn't. rosemary, thyme and sage are all perennials. Okay. And then the parsley of course is going to be an, an annual and as long as you keep chopping it back, you know, tenderly, but on Thanksgiving you might want to just yeah. grab the whole thing. It'll keep coming back. So, and then the last thing I'm going to, well, maybe not the last okay. thing. We can talk about, if you want to grab that little one right uh -huh. there, and I'll grab this one. Okay. So, um, I'll just stick this here for a moment. Um, cool season tomatoes. Oh. Um, it's not too late. Right now we're in our hottest months. We've still got September, October, and probably part of November. Your tomatoes, if you plant them now, I'd say plant them really quickly because usually you do a second crop starting between July and September. You will have tomatoes going for quite a while. These are smaller varieties, so they're quicker uh -huh. to ripen. And this one, you know, you can tell just by the name, Glacier. It's a cool season tomato. The Stupicha is my personal favorite. It's just it just produces and produces and produces beautiful little tomatoes about this big. Okay, I'm, this is an SOS. Anybody that has any information, my tomatoes this year, mm -hmm. I always have mice and rats. I mean, oh, sure. So. This year, though, something came at night, every night, and took them off the vine. And it wasn't a neighbor. <laughs> I'm quite sure of that. And I wrapped them mm -hmm. in stuff. So I don't know whether it's the raccoon. Or a possum or like something? A squirrel. Squirrels are usually the smartest. But they're not usually not at night, do they? I think they do what they can do. Yeah, okay. I, I had a really bad year with tomato thievery as well. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. It okay, was, well, I'm not my, alone. My tomatoes so live in a cage that had been fortified this spring. <laughs> and they I do. still got in <laughs> there. That's me. I, I just finally just said, I'm taking all the tomatoes out because I don't want you to have any more. <laughs> I, yeah, I just chopped them all off and I said, I'm done. I, 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 it was a really frustrating yes, year for is. tomatoes. Yes, it is. Yeah, so, I mean, particularly when you think of, these are expensive tomatoes. <laughs> I know. The amount of time and money you spend on them for this one... You know. we, we had like two weeks where we actually had some, and then all of a sudden they were just pilled for dinner. As soon as they slightest bit of red, gone. Yeah, then they're gone, or they're eaten 75% yeah, like, mm, of yeah. the way through. Yeah, I really think. want to eat that tomato now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I wasn't alone. Well, if any of you have actual pictures of something stealing, let us know. <laughs> I, I, at least in my garden, we think it was mice and squirrels. And then uh, one thing, you know, a lot of people come in in spring and they ask for rhubarb. But we have rhubarb right now, and so it's a fun thing to plant now, and then in spring, when it starts growing, you can, you know, kind of protect it, and oh. this, you know, you should only eat rhubarb when it's red down here, yeah. and so plant it now, and by next spring, you will be rhubarb ready. I never think of rhubarb as something we have. Of course, maybe because I don't like rhubarb, so I don't think <laughs> attention to it. I think it's, it's kind of like a, it's something I grew up with, and, um, I've always really liked it, but it's a weird thing to find here. Yeah. And it can be expensive to find here. So if you're looking for rhubarb, this is the this is the time to plant it. We also have onions. You know, plant onions now, plant shallots, plant leeks. The weather's getting cooler. It's great. They're just gonna sit there for a couple of months and then you can yank them up, you know, around December, January and, and enjoy them. And so that's sort of fun because that, that, that was when, when we first uh, year in, in the East Coast, you know, mm -hmm. I wasn't used to things dying back really, and we had this yard, and all of a sudden, these little flowers would come up, or the forsythia would, and it was like, it was all so exciting because right. you didn't know anything was there, and that would be neat, particularly your vegetables, that you could do that and have right. them. The the um, yeah, the onions, and then you know, as as it gets a little cooler, you're going to be planting things like your kale, your cabbage, things. It really has to be cool in order to have good broccoli and cauliflower and things like that. 
Last winter would have been a great winter because it was really cool and it was really rainy and they do not care okay. if the weather is like that. Just like this, you can tell the, the leaves uh -huh. are really waxy. They yeah, can they, fight tough. off all of the water. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed we have a nice cool winter again. Plant all those cruciferous vegetables that you like and they'll, they'll be fine. Okay, and then always remind us in terms of what we should be doing in the garden besides planting. There are things we should be doing in the fall. I, I always feel like at this time of year you want to clean up, you want to amend your soil, you want to get ready for if you're going to be doing cooler season things, if you're going to be planting for, you know, the holidays, Thanksgiving and anything, Christmas, whatever, start it now. Clean up your beds, get your stuff down and plan so that when that time comes you're ready. Again, like, you know, if you want to plant this ornamental kale everywhere, that's great, but get the beds ready, uh -huh. amend them, make sure that you've got your compost on there, and if you're ready, get, get your mulch ready to go because it, it's a real transitional time right this moment, September, because uh -huh. it's still hot as blazes. Oh, yeah, when the sun comes out. Right, it's hot as blazes, and so we think, oh, it's fall, but it's, it's not yet. Yeah. It probably won't have it till end of October, so enjoy, you know, the beautiful color that you can right now, but amend your soil clean out your beds, you know, clean out your gutters, do all those garden things that nobody wants to do, that's, you'll do it now. Well, what I'm thinking of is uh, bare root, bare root roses, bare root fruit trees and everything. Is this the time of year or is it later that we plant it's them? It's later okay. and I just got an email from David Austin Roses in oh, England yeah? and they said now's the time to order. Uh, so if you're interested in something like that, you can order your bare root roses now. They'll probably come around January here. And you can plant your roses usually January, February, okay, so right, a little when bit, you're cutting so back in, in the winter. Like that. Yeah. When we're we'll be water. getting bulbs soon. So you can do your uh, narcissus and paper whites and tulips. Tulips, of course, have to go in the refrigerator for a couple of weeks before you put them in the ground. And then you have to, of course, give them space and not plant anything, you know. Oh, are they really picky about well, what Well, no, but like if you have a whole <laughs> bed, you're going to have to throw the the bulbs in among other things but if you're just going to have a bed of tulips you have to just have soil there until the spring and it, oh yeah i out. see what you're saying okay so the bare spots oh well, good well i i love all this i mean this is just yeah. beautiful we didn't really talk about the cypress but that's just now are these regular big ones or are these miniature ones they are big ones and i was kind of i was thinking a lot about you know people always like to have decorations for their front porch yeah. or their beds you can have that and then mix things around yeah. them that's always going to be your thriller, your filler, your spillers, um, so that you can create the thrillers, beautiful. the spillers, and the fillers. I like that. Right. <laughs> that's how you create a beautiful, you know, arrangement in a pot or something. And so, that's I, that's why I brought those. Those the grasses. They're the thrillers. Yeah. Oh, these are just beautiful. One, I love the colors because you've got everything from just, as I say, the very fall tones, but you've also got really bright jolts of reds and, and golds and yellows. The textures yeah, and are differing, so differing textures and uh, great. Yes. We'll just take this table, thank you. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> thank you, Suzanne. As My usual, pleasure. very informative, and I can't wait to get back into the garden. I, I are know. your fingernails dirty? Mine are always yeah, dirty. Yeah, I actually had to wash them before you got here, so <laughs> yes. I'm always like, even with gloves, it doesn't seem to make any difference. I still get, they still get dirty. Latex gloves, then your yeah, right, gloves. yeah. Well, that's kind of <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you so much. My pleasure. All right. Well, that's our show. I don't know if you had a favorite. I think this is one of mine, though. This is a great little little squash. So, until next time, let's all work on keeping our village green. <laughs>